Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Enermax Galaxy Evo 1250 watt power supply. What's included is the user's manual, Velcro cable tie downs, a carry pouch for the modular leads, four screws for mounting the power supply in the case, the power cord, and the power supply. The Galaxy Evo line of power supplies are currently available in wattages ranging from 850 to 1250. I will be reviewing the 1250 watt model, which is more than enough power even for hardcore computer systems. Now how is this wattage determined? Well to understand that, you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use. And there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. In this particular case, the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 170 watts and the 12 volt is 1200 and 48 watts, which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU video cards, etc. Also some might be interested to know the peak amps on each rail. Well the 3.3 volt and the 5 volt rails are both 25 amps each and there are 6 plus 12 volt rails and those are 30 amps each with a combined power of 104 amps. There are a couple of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware you will be installing. Generally speaking, a medium to high end gaming rig will require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. For a hardcore system, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. The efficiency of this power supply is 89% at 20 to 100 percent load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has a PFC. A PFC or active power factor correction is something that also assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. A PFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully this power supply has a PFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, AD+, NVIDIA SLI, and ATI Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. This power supply meets the AD+, Bronze, Crossfire, and SLI certifications. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. This ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low-grade capacitors. This power supply uses Japanese capacitors. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside the case. Let's have a closer look at this power supply. Since this is a high wattage power supply, it's fairly long. Now it still should fit in most mid-sized tower cases, but will probably not fit in some home theater PC and small form factor cases. It has a rough paint finish and the housing is steel. Here's the power cable connection and the power switch. There is also a power guard status LED, which is green when turned on and everything is normal, orange when in standby mode, and red when the power supply protection is active. This power supply uses AirGuard, a patented air intake with optimal aerodynamical design reducing noisy air turbulence. To achieve this, all they've done is bevel the edges around the fan so when the fan intakes cool air, it doesn't cause noisy turbulence. This is a very simple but effective way of reducing fan noise. Note that when the system is turned off, heat guard will keep the power supply running for 30 to 60 seconds to dissipate the remaining system heat, prolonging lifetime. They include a temperature controlled quiet recessed 135 millimeter fan. So as the load increases, the hotter the inside of the power supply gets and the faster the fan spins. 
this fan and the honeycomb ventilation ensures maximum cooling so the power supply should remain cool in almost any environment. This power supply has lots of leads, but the main motherboard leads, as well as the PCI Express leads, are hardwired into the power supply and can't be removed. The remaining are sleeved modular leads, which is excellent because you only need to use the ones required for your particular setup. This reduces the cable mess inside the case and it also increases airflow. Note that this power supply also comes with an RPM monitor. This lead gets connected into the motherboard's fan header. This power supply is also built for most upcoming CPUs and video cards by using 12 pin sockets for possible connector changes. It also complies to the latest EPS 12 volt power design guides for compatibility by using six massive 12 volt rails for perfect load distribution and by zero load design for C6 state and hybrid mode functions. Additionally, this power supply is server compatible, supporting multiple CPUs, video cards, workstation, server motherboards, hard drives, and memory. Finally, have a listen to the 135 millimeter fan. If you're in the market for a very serious power supply for a hardcore or really extreme gaming computer system, then this line of power supplies from 850 to 1250 will definitely meet your needs. The performance on this power supply is exceptional. Overall, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care.